Hey everybody and welcome to this month's tips and tricks video. My name is Dave Hiddeman, the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today's video is more on IFC files, uh, specifically being able to customize the IFC files that you're creating out of Tecla. Um, now a couple months ago I did a video on working with IFC files or you know kind of beginning with IFC files as far as importing them and the different types of things you could do with them. Um, so this time we're talking about exporting or creating IFCs. Now there's a lot of different reasons why you may want to create an IFC file or be cr um, required to create an IFC file. Uh, it could be for collaboration purposes, it could be uh, at the request of a GC, it could be, um, f you know, we've been talking a lot over the past few years about ESTA modeling and then using the IFC model in our own Tecla EPM workflows for ESTA modeling. Um, so lots of reasons why you might want to create an IFC. And um, just to kind of show you some of the default options, you can see uh, here I've got the export IFC window open. I, I basically just went to the file menu, uh, export, and then chose IFC. Um, in here we have some drop down options. Now I'm going to have uh, a couple of different options in here with my setup, um, but you're going to see things in here like for Trimble Connect or for Tecla Structures, um, for Fab Suite might be one of the uh, older settings you may have. So um, you can come in here and choose one of these, like if I select the Trimble Connect and click Load, it's going to change the output file name, the type of IFC file, um, and some other options. Um, but like I said, you may want to customize these, uh, what is actually going to be included in them. So let me uh, change a couple of options here. I'm just going to create a plain old IFC file using a coordination view. Uh, I'm going to do selected objects just in the interest of saving time, um, and you can see here I'm, I'm I already have selected the property set for Trimble Connect, but I'm just going to go ahead and choose new. Okay, so I'm going to pretend that there is no um, additional property sets being included. I just want to customize my own. Um, you know, feel free to obviously to come in here and try some of these different ones for different reasons, but I just want to show you um, how things get added here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the edit button, and it's important to note that. Um, maybe kind of taking a half step back that there is a lot of information already included in the IFC files. I mean, I would highly recommend creating a sample and sending it to something like Trimble Connect where you can view the amount of data that's being uh, included in the, uh, these IFC files. So before you just start go willy-nilly adding a bunch of stuff, you know, maybe see what's there first. Um, but let's say that you wanted to add additional data. This is how you do it. Okay, so um, under the additional property sets, I clicked edit. This opens the property set defin uh, definitions uh, folder, or sorry, window. And uh, first off, I'm going to create a new configuration file. So I'm just going to call this uh, sample added stuff. Okay, uh, now each configuration file can have multiple property sets associated with it. Now most folks are just going to leave this at default and just start adding a bunch of different property sets and that's fine. But I just want to let you know that there are different levels that you can add in here. So I'm going to create a set called part properties um, and I'll say new and then I'm also going to create one called assembly properties. Oop, let me make sure I type that in and click new. Okay, so I've got two groups in here, assembly and part. Let me go back to the part properties right now. So for part properties, um, there's going to be different object types. Here you can see I've got beam, column, uh, plate, those are obviously parts. There's also going to be other object types in here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, beam, column and plate as my parts that I'm worried about. And here you can see there are attributes under the part properties that I can start to check on and off for what I want to include. Like I said, there's a lot of this stuff that's already there. So don't just go adding stuff before you see the information that's already included. Um, so what I'm going to do though is focus not on the regular physical properties, but I'm going to focus on additional properties like user defined attributes. You know, not something that's physical, but a note that I'm adding to this piece. So I'm going to go to the user defined attributes tab. And then under these, you can see where I have beam. These are the different UDAs that are included or, you know, uh, available to be added. Um, so I'm going to sp specifically focus on the shear studs. 
uh, UDA. So we're going to scroll down here a bit, and you can see there's a shear studs uh, option. So I'm going to go ahead and check that. You can see it's an integer value. Um, and you can go through and add some additional ones in here. And again, this is specifically a beam related UDA in this case. Uh, but you can see that it's giving me a name, it's giving me a type. I am a user defined attribute, I am an integer. Uh, there are going to be additional types under here like string, measurement, timestamp, and that's more for like a date type, right? Um, so we're just going to go ahead and do that. So um, I'm going to save that setting. Um, you know, I could add more. I'm trying to keep this relatively brief, so I'm kind of giving this a very high level overview. I apologize. Uh, let me go now to my assembly properties, and we're going to choose on the IFC element assembly, and we're going to load in an assembly user defined attribute. In this case, I'm going to do um, fabrication start date. Let me see here. Let's scroll down. So we'll go to planned fab start check that option. Again, you can see how it's automatically assuming or understanding that this is a timestamp, but I could change it to something else. Um, you can, you know, change some of this up right now. It's going to bring it in as the actual attribute uh, name, and it's kind of keeping that up here, but we could just say, um, you know, planned, turn off my caps lock, planned uh, fabrication date. So that's a little bit more uh, reader uh, or easy to read, you know, kind of user friendly, uh, if that makes any sense, we'll go ahead and we'll modify that. And again, we could go through and add that for other uh, object types, other user defined attributes that we want to include. But I'm going to go ahead and just save and close. Again, I don't want to spend too much time in these videos. I want to try to keep them brief. Um, so let's go ahead and add a couple of UDAs here. So first off, let's go ahead and add some UDAs to these beams. I'm going to do the shear studs. Um, UDA. So number of virtual studs, we're going to say uh, 20. That's probably a lot, but we'll say 20. And then for this one, we'll say this is at uh, 25. And then this one is going to be at uh, uh, 18. So we'll modify that. Okay. So those are my part level UDAs. So now we can go ahead and add in some assembly level UDAs. So let's open up the properties here of a, an assembly. And we're going to do the planned fab start date. So the start date for these beams, uh, we're going to go ahead and say that these are planned for the 9th. And then I'm going to say that these columns um, can't really, shouldn't really fabricate the beams before the columns. Uh, so let's set those for the day before. We'll set that for the 8th. And we'll say modify. And you could, again, you could keep going with some of these things. Let's say let's make these the 10th and we'll modify. Okay. So we'll stop there. And uh, now I'm going to generate that IFC file. So I'm going to go ahead and select just really the end of the building that I've been poking around with. Again, don't want to send too much out for the uh, examples here in this video. And I'm going to change the name of this. We'll call this um, uh, tip and trick sample. So I'll go ahead and hit an export. And again, I'm exporting the selected objects including all the standard information that might be in an IFC file, but I'm also adding those additional property sets that I've just customized. Okay, so that uh, IFC goes ahead, goes and gets dumped in the model folder. So we're going to open up the tip and trick sample. Now I'm just going to double click on this. I'm going to open up in Trimble Connect. Um, doesn't have to be Trimble Connect. It can be another IFC viewer, but obviously we have um, this already available. So why not use it? And uh, we'll give this a second to go ahead and load in that portion of the model. Okay. So now I've got these pieces in here. And, you know, first off, let me select one of the parts that is not part, you know, not, uh, it doesn't have a UDA added to it, right? Uh, just to show you again, there is a ton of data already being included here. So you're already getting things like the assembly weight. You're already getting things like the, the, uh, top top elevations, the bottom elevations, the the grid locations, the piece marks. So don't just start adding those those bits of information. First, see what's included. Um, if I select this, that's currently at the part level. But if I select this at the assembly level, uh, sorry, I had it at the assembly. Let me change this to part. Um, when I pull up the information at the the part level, I'm getting even more data. You know about the the origins and the volumes and all kinds of things like that. Uh, different types of notes that are attached to it. So again, just kind of beating a dead horse here. There's a lot of data already there. But let's go ahead now and see the pieces that we 
did add those UDAs to. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up this first beam. And if I scroll down, here you can see part properties, shear studs, I'm trying to highlight it here with my mouse. Um, part properties, shear studs 20. If I go to the next piece and pull up its information, and we'll scroll down some, some here, so shear studs 25. So I have included that additional data for those parts. Now, I selected it at the part level, and, and Trimble Connect, if I keep scrolling down, is going to give me the values inherited from the higher assembly. So, you know, I'm going to get that information like planned fabrication date, um, but it's easier if you just switch to the assembly selection. Um, it'll it'll bring you up, you know, a little less data, um, a kind of cleaner look because I'm, I'm looking at, you know, a kind of more of a narrow definition of this member. But here again, there's the planned fabrication date for that beam. Um, let me go ahead and select another object. There's the planned fabrication date for the column, and there's the planned fabrication date for the brace. So again, just a very quick, very simple example, but I just want to make sure that everyone is aware there is um, a lot of additional data that you can include with the IFC files, and it can be for you know any number of reasons. The question has come up a lot, so I wanted to make sure that we had this video um, you know, for people to come back and reference at a later date. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for future tips and tricks videos or kind of curious how things work in Tecla, again, go ahead and leave that below. Um, as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.